And this right here is exactly what I'm looking for today. This is what's called ground cherry or Cape gooseberry or husk tomato. There are a lot of different common names for this particular little fruit. It's a relative of the tomatillo. If you're familiar with tomatillos, you know that they're covered in a papery husk related to the tomato, of course. It's a member of the nightshade family, genus Fisalis. Almost indistinguishable by this papery lantern shaped husk that surrounds the small fruit right in the middle. That is a key identifying feature of this particular wild edible plant, which is referred to most commonly as the common ground cherry. Uh, this particular one is the variety of the species smooth ground cherry. There are so many different species of this particular plant, but they all have one thing in common. All of the little fruits are covered in this little papery husk. In the spring, you get a bell-shaped yellow flower with a brownish purple, splotchy, very center interior. And then that quickly turns into a green little papery lantern husk and a green berry forms in the middle. Now, one thing you really want to note about these particular fruits and this particular plant is that you don't want to eat these fruits green. You want to wait until they are a nice golden yellow color because these are a member of the nightshade family and they do contain some toxins when they are unripe and they can definitely make your stomach hurt or even worse if eaten in quantity. But at this stage, you can see the plant is nice and dead and dying. And let me just reveal this particular one right here. I'm just gonna open up this husk and look at that beautiful golden colored berry right on the inside. I've often found that these berries really start to ripen in the fall after the first frost. These can persist even into the winter months. I have eaten many a frozen ground cherry dangling from a dead bush like these right here in January and February when everything is ice cold. Taste-wise, these are absolutely delicious. They taste like a cross between a tomato and a lemon and a gooseberry, if you can imagine that. Just gonna pull one right off the plant here. These can be eaten raw or cooked, as long as they're this beautiful golden yellow color. A little hint of tomato, but definitely on the tart side. When you taste a ground cherry, you immediately realize why these are so popular in dessert style dishes like tarts and pies and jams and jellies. They are perfectly suited for that. For my purposes, I'm only gonna need about 20 of these ground cherries today. And these are gonna make the absolute perfect ground cherry chutney for my steak. Just gonna pick them right off the plant. My mouth's watering just here in that steak. But it's even going to be better with a wild ground cherry chutney. All right, so take a look at this. This is a perfect example of a ground cherry that's not ripe. See how it's got this greenish tint to it in comparison to these yellow ones? 
I'm gonna set this one aside. In fact, I can take this one with me and sit it on the counter at home and it'll ripen over the course of a few days. I'm only gonna use the ones that are a bright golden yellow in color. While my steak's resting and my pan is still piping hot, I'm gonna go ahead and toss in my ground cherries. the moment of truth. It's time to test out my campfire steak with my ground cherry chutney. Oh man, not only is that steak awesome, but the sweet tartness of that chutney on top of that fatty steak. I wish you were here right now because this right here is how you're supposed to enjoy a meal by a campfire. <laughs>